Hey guys, it's Anne. I have some very exciting news regarding our upcoming episode of Nursing Uncharted. I'm interviewing not only a nurse, but a published author. He's decided to give one lucky listener a signed copy of his new book. To snag this copy, head on over to Instagram at AMN Nurse, send us a DM saying brand new nurse book, Nursing Uncharted, and you may be that one lucky listener that will receive the copy. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Nursing Uncharted. Today, I this is really special for me because not only do we have a nurse with us today, we have a published author. So I'd love to introduce Dave Dovell. Um, and how about you just start it off by telling me a little bit about yourself? Hi, Anne. Uh, yeah, my name is Dave Dovell. I'm a registered nurse in New Jersey. I uh, currently work as a um, progressive care nurse in a really busy community hospital. Uh, we have about 370 beds, and we get a really wide variety of patients, which is exciting for me. I come from more of a, a cardiac background. That was my first job out of nursing school. And prior to all that, I worked in an ER as a tech while I was in school, and I was an EMT, Organ and 911 system for seven years. Yeah, you have quite the quite the healthcare background. So this book, I'd love for you to, you know, introduce the title of what this book is. And I think it's going to explain itself a little bit, but we can then dive a little bit into how how you got here, how you went from bedside nurse to published author. Yeah, of course. My book, Brand New Nurse, Surviving Your First Day on the Job, is as it sounds. It's a survival guide for brand new nurses. And I tried my best to fill in all of the gaps that nursing school leaves behind. So different things that you're going to need to be successful as a new nurse, like communication skills and how to stay organized and time management, all the little intricacies of the job that when you're studying so hard, all the academic knowledge while you're in nursing school, a lot of times it doesn't leave a lot of space for you to practice these skills. And they're really paramount to your success, getting through your orientation and starting out working in a hospital somewhere. And I identified a gap there when uh, we were working in the pandemic and new nurses were coming in to the hospital with no bedside experience at all. And they yes. just had that academic knowledge, uh, whatever skills that they picked up in their skill lab. And then they had to take care of patients and talk to doctors, and yep. manage multiple disciplines like speech therapy, PT, OT. To say it was a mess, <laughs> it was beyond challenging for the new yeah. nurses that were coming through. And they really weren't being set up for success as a result of not having those clinical experiences during nursing school. So I wrote this book to, to kind of fill in that knowledge. I would really like anybody who picks it up that's in nursing school to, you know, give it a once over on the night before their first day on the job, because that's really, that's really what it should yeah. be. It's a, it's a pep talk, you know, before yeah. you go in, just letting you know that, Hey, if, if you, if you read through and you take some of this advice to heart, keep this book in your, in your nurse bag with all the other swag, everybody's been getting you as graduation gifts and all that stuff referencing from time to time. I think that it would be, it would go a long way to contribute to everybody's success entering the nursing profession. Yeah, I mean, I I love that you. I mean, the title is surviving your first day, but labeling it as it as a survival guide, and especially with how healthcare has changed from the pandemic. I mean, you, if I'm, if correct me if I'm wrong, but you started nursing just right before the pandemic, right? Yeah, my timing yeah. was good. I I got almost yeah. a full year under my belt before the pandemic hit, so it it gave me. I had a great orientation period. I, I had amazing preceptors. I was mentored. And I felt, I mean, you know, nursing is, is hard enough as it is. And, and being new is so difficult. But I felt so much better prepared than the nurses that were coming in behind me that I was then in turn precepting. Right. Um, yeah. They, <laughs> right they off just, the bat. They, they didn't have the benefit that I had. And especially if you take nurses, See, I, I came from that healthcare background then where I worked on the truck for a while. You know, I, I knew some basics and and how to talk to patients and how to handle right. patients. You know, those are sort of those those social skills, you know, outside of the realm of 
what are your lab values? What does this disease process mean? How do we treat, you know, this and that? It's it's all the other skills that are that are so difficult to learn. And at least if you come through and you have experience as a CNA or a tech or working in healthcare in any capacity, and then you come in, you have a little bit of that experience, you know. But I was taking people that went from bartending to having yeah. an assignment of six patients. Yeah. You know, the next well, week. Bartending, you have a little bit of communication skills. I mean, that's part. That's a big part of that job, but I sure, yeah, re- lots of parallels. Yeah. Re- reflecting back on like my career is I didn't, I, I'm so envious of even I worked two days ago, the girl that I worked with, she was the PCA, you know, the secretary, and she was starting nursing school in February. And it's like just the knowledge that she gained from watching nurses and the communication. And I've pushed on that in previous episodes, like the importance of that and how you don't learn that in school at all. You know, and then you're put on the put on the floor and you have to communicate, like you said, with everybody, not just the patient. And, you know, I I wish I would have had that experience as, you know, a CNA or I I love that you have your like EMT, like the pre-hospital experience, because that's a that's a really good prep for inpatient nursing. Yeah, it helps you appreciate, too. You, You understand, you know other people's perspectives, you know, instead of just coming right out of nursing school and you either go to med surge or you go to critical care, you know, you're on this hospital unit and you really don't have much knowledge outside of your unit and and what you do on a day to day, you know, appreciating what it's like to work EMS. I mean, that's our scope might not have been very broad, but we're treating patients. I treated patients on the side of highways. Mm -hmm. I've treated patients in overturned minivans. I've treated patients on the side of their uh, of a burning house as their house burns down there's so many environmental factors that are so different so so scope and and you know what we can do professionally and what our certifications might be is going to be different but no matter where you work within the healthcare t- continuum you are going to have very unique skill sets and challenges and it's going to be totally different from everywhere else you know, I commonly yeah. hear that now it's, it's, uh, we have a lot of, especially on social media, there's a lot of critical care nurses that are kind of coming out and saying, you know, like we, we need to stop talking down to our med surge nurses, our LTAC nurses, um, you know, our rehab nurses, because just because you're ICU and you might have unique certifications and training to handle really critically ill patients, I see it all the time on my unit, you know, an ICU nurse gets pulled to the PCU where their patient load doubles. Everybody can walk. Yeah. Even, you know, or, or they shouldn't be walking, but they're trying to. Yeah. It's a totally unique experience. It's very challenging. Yeah. So we all have things that we're, we're good at, you know, but um, pre-hospital care, uh, a unit secretary, unit coordinator, any kind of experience. And, I, you know, anybody listening that's thinking about going into nursing school or you're in now, and you might have that restaurant job or, you know, a retail job. I would really recommend if you can get somewhere in, in to where you're going to be talking to patients, uh, yeah. that little bit of experience is going to go a long way. I, I agree. I, I really agree. And that's what I guess my point of my story that I went off on a tangent is just I, I wish I would have had some sort of medical background, you know, entering into the the nursing field. But I've been a nurse for a very long time. So when I started back in 2009, I had a phenomenal, you know, orientation. And, you know, I worked at a small community hospital and it's such a different vibe, like a community hospital versus like a, you know, level one trauma center, you know, main campuses. You get like you almost get those mentors just they like to be that mentor to you. But, you know, not everyone has that. So I think it's amazing to have a survival guide you know, written by a nurse who went through it, who has the background that you do and can kind of walk you through and take almost take like the jitters away on that first day too, or even like your first couple months, you know, it's not just about that first, first day. It's, you know, the first year of your nursing career is stressful. So sure. And yeah, and, you know, you, you get to be new during that time. And, and that's what, you know, a lot of the jitters is, am I going to, do something wrong? Am I going to pretend, am I going to arm someone? Am I, you know, what if I don't know how to handle this situation or handle a difficult, you know, diagnosis and treatment plan? 
whatever it might be, yeah. you get to be new. You get to lean yeah. on your preceptor and, and your mentors and your leadership, your nurse educator. There's going to be such a network of people that are there to support you, but you do at the same time have to learn how to vocalize what your needs are because, you know, the handholding isn't there at most institutions. They, they expect you to come in as a professional and to identify what your own deficits might be and then speak up about them. Yeah, you have such great insight. I, 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 I love this so much because it's, it's just so relevant in our nursing field right now. Because even I know we, when we spoke the first time, uh, one of the key things were like cell phones, you know, right in nursing yes. school you were not allowed to have your cell phone. Like it was a no-no. And now it's almost like, okay, make sure you have your cell phone so you can, you know, get on the apps like that you can get your, for me, like a Neofax, you can have that on your on your phone. And it, it's just, it's so crazy how things have changed. And I know that that was something that was big to you as well. Yeah, well, because it's, you know, on, on one hand, uh, we do see with the newer generations coming up, you know, there are some, I don't know how to really phrase it, I guess, differences in things like manners and what's acceptable in different situations. And, you know, when I am walking on my unit and we have a cohort of nursing students, if I see a lot of, if I see all these nursing students and they're all hovering around different desks and computers and taking up chairs and whatnot, and all of them are buried on their phones, right? That's there, There's an impression there. Yeah. And I definitely think, I thought it when I was in nursing school, and I still believe it to be true. I think every single day that you are at a clinical, it's kind of a walking, working job interview. You need to have your best foot forward all the time. And you know how many nurses our unit alone has hired out of the nursing student cohorts that have come through? Oh, really? All the time. Our manager sits down with the nursing school instructors at the end of each cohort when they come through and they have a roster of the students and they go through and they're like, this is this the one that, that helped out with that RRT that time? Is this the one that ran and grabbed a piece of equipment from the other unit? Is this the one? And they put little stars next to certain names. And those lists sit in my assistant nurse manager's office or they sit somewhere else on the unit because we've seen firsthand. We don't have to go. You can interview well. And yeah. then maybe not have the work ethic we're looking for. Right. But to really see somebody working on the flip side of it, I don't know for sure if they cross names off the list right then and there. But I, if I were the manager, I, I would, you know, or just I'd make a little there, note. Hey, is this the one that every time I see them, they're buried on their phone or, you know, they're, yeah. they're in the break room taking personal calls? While, yes, it, it makes sense to use your phone. It's a it's a wonderful piece of technology. I always call it my yeah. class covered supercomputer. Mostly yeah. because my kids asked to play on it, and I say, no, nah, not yeah. with my glass covered <laughs> supercomputer. But it's amazing technology that we have, referencing medication information, referencing disease processes that we haven't heard of. It's so much faster than logging on to the work computer sometimes, but using it responsibly, even when you're a nursing student coming on. I mean, yeah. you really, I, so one thing I like to, I like to tell people to do, I say, really, sometimes optics and impressions are everything. Verbalize what you're doing on your phone. That really helps. I think that that yeah. goes a long way. If you can take your foot and say, all right, well, I'm going to look up that medication because I'm not sure what it is or if it's contraindicated with something else that the patient's getting. At least now I know why you're on your phone. But if every time I turn around and I'm explaining, I'm taking my time to teach you, every time I turn around and you're on your phone, I'm not assuming right away that it's to look up things that I'm talking about. Yeah. I like how I, I, I really like this hospital like and how... The manager does that. And I think that's really important for nursing students to understand. And, you know, at my uh, staff job, I'm I'm traveling right now, but I have a per diem staff job. We get a lot of students through and it's it's kind of fun because, you know, sometimes nurses don't want students because it's a pain. We don't want to have to like teach, but I like to teach people and I like to I, I get excitement from their excitement for learning something new. Um, and it's so interesting that you'll have people who are just ready and like taking notes. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you're going to be such an amazing nurse because you can't like they care. They want to uh -huh. be, they want to be good. They want to know what everything that they can because they want to be successful. And then you have others that don't necessarily do that or kind of annoyed, just want to do the bare minimum. So I think it's, 
especially in the hospital that you that you work at, that you hire a lot of nursing students that come through that program, that's brilliant to keep notes. And I think it's important and should scare some nursing students to be like, this you're being watched and it's important because I I didn't feel that way in nursing school because I was like, I'm never gonna work, you know, in this part of the state that I was living in. But it's it's good practice, if anything, even if you don't see yourself working there, it's good practice to have the that interview. Well, listen, you know, two things. One, it doesn't matter what part of the state that you're going to your clinicals in, because someone at that hospital knows has someone worked, will work or is best friends with somebody that works wherever you're applying. I this is very true. You. I <laughs> yeah. promise you. I have an entire chapter in my book dedicated to building your professional reputation. Okay. And it, it starts with the cell phone use, but it goes on to how you present yourself. It's your it's everything from your body language. Are you leaning? Are you sitting every chance you get? Or are you on the heels of your preceptor taking every learning opportunity possible? It doesn't mean that you're a brown nose and you go in and, and you go out of your way to try and, you know, shine in front of leadership or something. Right. But do you actually present yourself as the kind of nurse that leadership is going to notice organically? Or are they just going to, you know, spot you doing something and then have you in mind for different promoted positions? You know, jump you up to charge nurse, jump you up if an opportunity comes up somewhere else that you want. So, so putting your best foot forward, no matter where you are, people move around from hospital to hospital. And I can't tell you how many times I currently work with, I work about a 35 minute drive from my first hospital. So it's a, it's a little bit of distance, you know, in New Jersey, everything is a 30 minute drive, it seems, but <laughs> um, countless people that I used to work with have now come over to work with me at this hospital. So if I had an absolute trash reputation over there for being lazy, yeah. for being insubordinate, for not taking care of my patients well at all, that would have definitely followed me. I mean, that people talk, you yeah. know, whether we say yes. we don't. And the other point, too, I, I wanted to mention. Um, this is a challenge for any of the experienced nurses. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of times I, I will, I will hear a lot and get a lot of feedback and have the ears of a lot of new nurses just because of the message in my book, but experienced nurses, we need to take these students and we need to precept the new nurses coming in. It is absolutely a job requirement. And if we want to take those vacation days, if we want to have somebody to cover us, if yeah. we want to have somebody to cover our lunch, you yeah. know, whatever it might be, if we want to move forward in our careers, maybe, you know, if, if you want to be a bedside nurse and take care of patients and things like that forever, I think that that's incredible. And, and you know, but a lot of people I talk to, they got their sights set on education or leadership, and you're not going to be able to slide out of your bedside role if there's nobody left to take it, you yeah. know? So we really have yeah. to make sure that the new nurses are coming through. And not only are they going to be set up for success, but they were really imparting all of the wisdom and knowledge that we've had through our experiences so that they can be really, really safe and really okay. loud advocates for patients. And we can feel confident moving up the ladder ourselves, knowing that whoever's coming in to take our place as a new nurse has those skill sets because we've imparted them. Yeah. And I think to me, when, you, when you're saying that, it just one of my big like soap boxes lately have just been when I go to work, especially as a traveler, I, I still strive to be the best nurse that I can be that day. And I get so frustrated that I will follow another nurse who maybe is, again, a travel nurse. And they're, th like the other day I had someone say, I didn't know how to do it, so I just didn't do it. But and that le left it for me to do. And I'm just like, Sometimes I'm like, why can't I be that way? Why can't I just like not care? But I'm I like, mean, you'd no. be right. You'd be out on time every day, right? Yeah, right. But that's the thing. It's like, no, because I do my job because I love my job and I love nursing and I love helping people. And, you know, I, I get the joy from that. And I want to put that onto these new nurses. And, you know, I think that in any pr profession, some people do it because they love it. Some people do it because of the money. But you find out very quickly in nursing, if you're in this for the money, you ain't gonna last because it's hard work and the money sometimes doesn't cover the amount of pain and suffering you have at home after you leave that hospital. So, you know, it's I, I think that 
Yeah, just I, I I'm very excited that you have created this guide for nurses and for experienced nurses. Also, it's important for us to be refreshed and reminded that we were once that new nurse. We know what it's like. And it's even more difficult now than when we went through it because nursing programs are completely different. And the pandemic, unfortunately, six years later, how many years later, five years later, we're still dealing with it. Right. So yeah, a lot of things haven't gone back to how they were. Yeah. And they may never, they may never. (laughs) And, you know, it's, uh, it's really to have a guide like this to help new nurses. Obviously that was my audience, you know, and I I felt like the biggest need was there, you know, but preceptors and experienced nurses alike, I have not given a copy of my book to anybody, regardless of their level of experience. And they haven't come back to me with something that they pulled from it, something that they learned. And maybe it's not just because I, I have a bunch, there's a whole bunch of tips and hacks and things like that, yeah. things that, you know, if, if if you read the book, then you don't have to spend 10 years doing something the hard way and then you learn, um, you know, but aside from those things, they will come to me and say, you know, it's been so long since I was in that position and just reading the introduction reminded me what it was like. The one, the one nurse manager, uh, she's a nursing supervisor at my other job. She read it. She came in. She said, oh, my God, I forgot I threw up in the parking lot on my way in. I was so nervous. I got out of my car. I'm like, I got my figs on. I've got my dance goes on. I've got my huge nurse bag that says cute enough, whatever it is, you know, cute enough to stop your heart. Oh, she's got all of her swag. And she's like, I made it three steps away from my car and I yacked in the bushes. (laughs) Oh, my God. I was so nervous. And I, I forgot all about that. And now she said, when I see new nurses coming in to the building, she like wants to run up and give them a hug and be like, I know you have a preceptor, but if you need anything, come ask me. Like she remembered how hard, yeah. how challenging, how exhausting it is. Yeah. Um, I've seen new nurses in tears, you know, but aren't we sometimes in tears? Oh, yeah. You know, with our Far experience, too often. things happen, right? Yes. I mean, you know, I think we built up a thick enough skin now to deal with the docs when they when they yell at us. But oh, yeah, <laughs> that, we just yell back. But there's there's a whole emotional side of nursing. There's always going to be something that you're uncomfortable with. Right. You know, and uh, I even I wrote about that in there, too. The emotional side of nursing, that it's OK to have your feelings and it's OK right. to go in and be human. You know, we, we as nurses, our bad day um if you work in logistics and you have a bad day, you might be late on a shipment, you know, or you might have a product missing. If if you have a bad day in nursing, someone someone died. Yeah. You know, someone lost their life. And we have to absorb that in a way that's healthy for us and then turn around and take care of the rest of our patients. Like five minutes later. Oh, yeah. And like hide it from them, you know. And yeah. That, yeah. I, they don't need to. So when somebody's banging on their call light on the bedside table because you haven't brought their turkey sandwich and the ginger ale in the last 15 minutes. Yeah. But you just wrapped up a code that didn't go well. Yeah. Not only do they not know that, but you're not going to tell them. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I thought I lost you for a minute. Yeah. Sorry. My, my <laughs> okay. phone has. I'm on do not I thought, disturb. I thought maybe you got emotional has. and wanted to hide that. <laughs> <laughs> just need a minute. <laughs> just need a minute. I'm just going to turn the camera off. Um, no, I this I'm really excited for this. I'm I'm really happy that somehow we got connected to have you on here to highlight, you know, this book. And I just think it's so I love when nurses have successful hobbies and passions that, you know, reach beyond what we do every day. And to to have, you know, you must love to write. You must have had some passion to become an author and, you know, to have that then relate to, you know, your career, I think is really special. I was making books when I was five years old. My, my pop-up gave me an old manual typewriter and I used to, uh, like, as I was learning the English language, I was, I was clacking out books on, on that typewriter. And, uh, I even used to save the little cardboard backing on my, uh, on the notepads my mother used for grocery lists. Yeah. Whenever she got to the end of one of those pads, and it took like a year, yeah, I would get to have that little piece of cardboard, and that was my cover for my books. I'd staple oh, that on. That was the hard, my gosh. 
cover. See, so and and you made it happen through nursing. Yeah, so it just, it took a long <laughs> time to figure out what I was going to write about, you know. But yeah. when I when I saw the need there, you know, it, it started out with a couple of nurses I precepted. They said, you know, this is really good advice. You know, you, you should uh, you should write a book or you should have should have a podcast or something to kind of get yeah. the word out. I started out with a blog. I started the new the new RN dot com as a blog to just put up articles okay. that would be of interest to new nurses. And then there was so much material to cover. It, it was kind of clunky to put it all together in blog articles. So I just started tying it together. And then, you know, the book kind of uh, started out as an outline and then it got flushed out to a bigger outline and bigger and bigger until I was ready to print the thing. Yeah. Well, that's it's very exciting. Do you do you feel that there may be a book in the future? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, once all my kids can dress themselves, bathe themselves, feed themselves, and you know, if the sales of this one get so great that I can hire a housekeeper, then I'll, I'll yeah. have the time to sit down. And <laughs> well, I'm um, telling you, you telling me about this book really. I, I wish I had it, and I'm I'm excited to recommend this. You know, I I there's so many people that I'm just like I'm going to tell them to get this book. Like this is so important to to have and just have the insight from someone who experienced it and just here's how to help you. I think that that's, that's wonderful. So, I mean, I, you had me on your show and for 30 minutes, you've been complimenting me. You're definitely going to get a copy. I'm going to send one out to you. Yeah, well, thanks. But, well, thanks. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, the idea has been put in my head to have uh, a few, you know, sort of like spinoffs of this that cover yeah. different, different parts of the nursing career, you know, whether it's a, yeah. uh, a uh, nursing student or um, uh, like a brand new, like preparing for NCLEX, sitting for job interviews kind of thing. I think a lot of the knowledge there is missing too, because again, yeah. nursing schools have so much knowledge to impart and most of them are running either a two-year program yeah, um, or they're running accelerated. Right. You know? so I see a lot so of that now. To, I don't know how you, how you teach somebody everything they need to know. So they are, they're relying on preceptors they're relying on outside <laughs> yeah they're they're yeah. relying on outside sources you know those uh those big youtube channels mm -hmm. um that have you know tens of millions of subscribers and they're relying on that and maybe my book a little bit to supplement what they're able to teach in the classroom and and in yeah. the clinical setting yeah so hey, that that's hey, the new face of nursing school <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, is. Yeah. it is i mean yeah. it, that that's just it we got to um you know my goal isn't to, uh, I'm still going to be a nurse. I'm not going to yeah. sail around on my yacht retired because of, you know, millions in book sales. Yeah. Um, you never know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe the next time I'm stuck in the code brown or something, I might change my mind. I don't know. Right. But the sales aren't there yet anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but really more than anything, I, I just, I want to see copies in the hands of new nurses because I truly believe it's going to really benefit. And all the feedback I've gotten, um, you know, I, I almost have a, it's got a perfect, almost a perfect rating on Amazon. It's like 4.9 okay. stars. And I've just been so, you know, lucky and, and grateful to see, you know, that kind of feedback. Um, it just tells me that what I put on papers is, is that beneficial to everybody, you know, that they're yeah. getting so much from it. Well, everyone listening to this should run out and, and get a copy before it sells out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, While supplies so, last. Yeah. Okay. So to to wrap this up, I would love to hear like what is your biggest what is your biggest takeaway for someone's first day? Like what out of everything you've written down, what is the one thing that just you just can't you just hold on to? I think your very first day walking in the hospital. Well, I there's two things I think they're equally important. Okay. Yeah. The first one is give yourself the pep talk. Get in there. Do not be afraid. Put your best foot forward, shoulders back, chin up. Smile every single time you meet someone. You're not going to remember half of them, and that's okay. Yeah. Smile every time you meet somebody, and just think of how hard you worked to get there and how fortunate you are that every day when you walk into this job, you're going to have the opportunity to make a lasting positive impact on people's oh. lives. I love that. Second that's thing, great advice. <laughs> The second thing, that was the that was the showstopper, but the second thing yeah. I think is just as important. Take a little notebook with you to work. 
you should be writing down every single thing that you don't know. Write down the code in the med room. Write down your passwords. Write down your preceptor's name, because that'll be awkward the next time you're in and you forget. Write down your leadership name. Everybody on your leadership team, know who your educator is. If they're explaining a patient to you and they say this patient is status post cabbage times three, if you're thinking that's a vegetable, write it down and look it up when you go home. You do not get to just go into your first couple days of the job and then clock out at the end and work is over. Yeah. You should be familiarizing yourself with everything that there is so that you really get your feet under you. When you're learning, you have so much to learn that any gaps in your academic and didactic knowledge, you should really take ownership of. So you should write all these things down that you don't know. If you don't know what labs to check before giving diuretics, write it down. All of those things. And this notebook, yeah. you should have this thing filled within two or three days. Yeah. So have that. If you come in with your pockets practically empty and you have no notebook or no cards, way to write things down that you don't know, you're not going to be setting yourself up to go home and YouTube these things and look things up so that you can come back in with that knowledge. You know, nurse, you can't fake it till you make it in nursing. That's how people get hurt. Okay. Yes. Yes. So to avoid constantly saying, I don't know, I don't know, when you're in week three, four, and five, and you've been exposed to things, the expectation will be there that you have taken it upon yourself to learn what you didn't know. Yeah, that's great advice, Dave. I'm I'm so happy that I met you and that we crossed paths. And I'm so excited for people to listen to this episode and even more excited for them to go out and grab a copy of your book. Yeah, sure. it's it, it yeah. couldn't be easier to get. It's right on Amazon. Perfect. Um, it's, it's available through Amazon Prime and all that. Uh, it makes an excellent gift for anybody that you know is going through nursing school um, and, you know, family member, loved one. But like I said, even if you're a preceptor or a more experienced nurse, putting yourself back in the shoes of a brand new nurse going through those jitters, you're not able to sleep that night. I think it's invaluable. Because uh, if you're precepting, you probably want to be as supportive as you can to the new nurses. So being in that mindset, especially if it's been, you know, almost a decade or longer since you've been in that position yourself, I think that that's an invaluable way that you can help those nurses and support them by understanding what they're going through that day. Yeah, I think it's for everyone. I do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to get this out there and have people listen. And I know this is going to definitely help a lot of new nurses out there. I appreciate you having me on the show. It was a blast. I, it, it was, was great meeting you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to listening to this episode. Anybody who's not listening to your podcast is, is missing out. So if this is the first episode that you're jumping on and listening to, yeah. whether it's because I linked out to it or, you know, or you came across it, you need to go back like I did when I was doing my research as a guest and listen to some of the other episodes. The, well, the knowledge is incredible you. and the stories you hear. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. You can learn more about this episode and our show on our website at amnhealthcare.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. You can also find show updates and nursing opportunities on our Instagram at amnnurse. Special thanks to AMN Healthcare for making this show possible.